Hello Internet, today I wanted to talk about Git hooks. This is a way for you to run actions or scripts when doing Git actions on your local computer. Um, so you might be familiar with things like GitHub actions, for example, that run when you check code into a GitHub repository. This is that, but for your local code, you can attach to specific events and even interrupt certain events um, using custom scripts that you might do that make sense for your workflow. What that workflow is, is going to change depending on what it is. Um, so we're just going to kind of show you how to set that up. And then you can address how that makes sense in your projects, because it's, it's going to be different. Um, there are a few gotchas here. Um, so we're going to kind of cover those as well. But this is just going to quickly cover how to actually set everything up. So first thing we need uh, is I'm in just a random project. This is an empty X unit test. Uh, project. And so what I'm going to do is first create a git repository. So I've already added a git ignore. We're going to git init. So now we have a git repository. I have enabled a setting in Visual Studio Code that actually means I can see my dot git rep or directory. You by default will not be able to see that. It's a hidden folder. Um, so it's going to be hidden and it's automatically not shown by default in Visual Studio. Um, so in order to see this, you need to actually go into your preferences inside of the JSON file and somewhere in here. Sorry, this is a mess, <laughs> um, but somewhere in here there is a files.exclude. Um, so you need to add this setting. And what this is doing is just saying include all Git directories inside of whatever I have open. Um, that double star means that if I open something that is maybe not a Git repository, but has Git repositories inside of it, it will also show those Git repository um, directories so I can see all of them rather than only if I open a top level project. Um, so that's what this is doing. We're just turning that exclude off. This is on by default, so make sure you do that. Um, otherwise, you can access this directly from your command line if you want. You don't need to enable this. Um, this, is, this is just a convenience thing that I do because it makes it easier to show and it makes it easier for me to find. Um, so now that we've done that, we have this fun Git repository. This is this local Git data about your Git stuff. Um, so this is storing all of the fun information about what you've actually done in Git. And inside of that, there is this hooks repository or this hooks directory. You can go into that and you'll see a bunch of samples for different things. By default, Git has already created a, a series of samples that you can use to create different actions. If you want to use one of these, let's use the pre commit. We can just delete sample. So all we have is just pre commit now. And everything is good. If you are creating these files from scratch, you need to do the same thing. So same message, no dot sh, no, no, any other extension, just the name of what you're doing. And then add your scripts. Make sure you make these files executable or Git is not going to be able to run them when you do whatever action it is. There's a bunch of things here. You'll see lots of like pre things. Um, the way those work is they're actions that happen before you do something. So as part of your Git flow, you're going to uh, commit things to your local repository and then push them to another repository. So you have pre commit. So before something gets committed into your local uh, Git history, you can actually run some scripts, maybe double check that your build actually builds, um, that your tests are passing or that you've actually addressed some specific thing. Maybe uh, check that the message that you're checking in matches the format that your team expects. All of these are kind of different things you can do. Another important note here is that files in this .git directory aren't synchronized with Git, which means that if you make changes here, they're not going to go and get checked in to everybody else on your team. So nobody else is going to see this. This is just local stuff to you. If you do want to do this more broadly, if you want something that's available to the rest of your team so that they can all use the same checks uh, in a little more universal way, the best way that I've found is to create a symbolic link here to something that is actually inside of your project. Um, and then that way it automatically links to that and changes get reflected. That's how I have found to set it up. Um, you can do whatever you want. It, the cool thing with this is it's all local. So you can kind of adjust it to your workflow, however makes sense to you. By default, there's a whole bunch of things here. 
we don't need any of this. All I want to do is just make sure that the project builds. Um, so we're going to do this and I'm just going to do .NET build. Um, so we're just going to say run a .NET build every single time you, you commit this. Um, so that, that's a, exactly what this is going to do. It's going to go and run and do all of the fun stuff. Um, so, so let's go and do that. Uh, we can check all this stuff in. So I haven't, I just created this Git repository, so we haven't actually checked any code in. Um, so let's do that and just check in our default project. So create test project. Uh, that's not how you spell that. There we go. Uh, so if we write this and click commit, everything is going to work. Um, you will notice it takes slightly longer. This is an important note here. If you're working on big projects that have things that take a lot of time, I mentioned potentially like running tests before you commit or push. Um, those are options you can do, but the downside of doing that is it's going to do that every single time you try to do this action. So if you need to run an entire project build and your build takes 10 minutes, um, that's, that's going to slow down your workflow because you're going to be waiting 10 minutes to commit a file. Um, and so you probably don't want to do that necessarily. You might want to consider that. That's one of the reasons why this is sort of project specific. What you actually want to do is going to depend. There are ways to skip this verification step. So if you don't want to deal with that, you can you can ignore all of that. Um, but it is there if you want it. So what we've done now is made it so that I cannot commit a file without that has breaking changes in it. So if my code won't compile, I cannot commit it. It's not possible for me to do that. Um, I will get an error. So let's break code. <laughs> um, so we're just going to do um, console dot write. Let's write something weird. Um, let's do write hello world. That's not a thing. Um, so this isn't a thing that we can do. This isn't a, a function that exists. This <laughs> it isn't a thing. Um, but we can commit it um, just because maybe we're intending to do something like that. Um, or I intended that to be a string and then I just got really confused. Uh, either way, we're going to add a hello world greeting. Cool. Uh, and then we're going to commit this. And now we're going to get an error. <laughs> so our, our git pre-commit broke. Uh, it did not work. So we can either open uh, the git log or show the command output. So let's just do that. And you can see, here's the git command that was run by Visual Studio Code when we click that commit. And here's the output. Um, so you can see we ran MS build and got an error that console doesn't have a definition for write hello world. So now we're actually getting compile errors as part of our commits. Um, this also happens on the command line, which I always forget how to use. Um, I think I've already added it. Um, so if we do git commit dash m, uh, add hello world greeting, uh, I believe doing that automatically stages it. So yeah, we'll get the same thing. You'll see it, all, it runs into an MS build and does all the same things. And you can do this. This is just a normal script. So if we want to write this, um, I think this should work. I haven't tested this, so I don't actually know. Yeah, there we go. So now we get hello world in our console. Um, you can have it do all sorts of custom things you want, um, even potentially modify or write your commit messages for you. Lots of different options here, but it's just a way to kind of make your tool chain nicer. Um, the ones that I found using the most are the pre push and the pre commit. They give you a way to kind of do these nice quick checks. There's a lot of other options that you have as well um, in order to do that. The other option you do have, if this is something you're working with, um, I don't know if it's an option here. Yeah. Um, but from the command line, when you're committing things, there is a dash dash no verify. Let's get rid of that. Um, so dash dash no verify. There we go. Um, is going to say don't verify this. Um, so we can't commit this. It's it's running build and, and the build isn't failing or isn't working. But maybe this is just a work in progress and we're fine with it landing in our history and we'll go back and refactor it later. Um, we can do no verify and everything works. Um, so we just skip that. There wasn't even a build. Um, and this gives you a way to kind of get around those if you if you don't want to run these 
manually. Um, this is also a reason why this isn't like a safeguard against other things. You can just skip it. Um, you shouldn't always be running no verify. Um, if things aren't working, that's probably an indication that you need to update that script or that something is actually broken. Um, if you constantly are finding yourself having to write no verify, double check that. Um, that sh this shouldn't be a normal part of your workflow. This is just something if it's, it, for example, we're trying to make sure our code builds so that we're, we're not committing like a broken thing to main. Um, you could you could do something like that. But anyway, there we go. That's all of that. Um, hopefully this is useful. Um, if you do use it in your projects, I'd love to hear about it. Um, otherwise, if there's other things that you've been using this for in your own projects, uh, shout them out in the comments and I, I'd love to discuss how, how that all works because this is still something that I'm less familiar with than maybe GitHub Actions or some other proper CI pipeline. This is different. Um, so anyway, thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. So until then, see you internet.